The great white shark is one of the ocean's greatest predators. These incredible animals have been the subject of international scrutiny since 2010, ever since their population started dropping in previously densely populated areas. Marine biologists, along with scientists and researchers, have said that in the last few years, an increased number of great white sharks have been washing ashore, something that isn't usually seen in this species. Great white sharks are known to migrate along the east coast of the United States, and they have been observed spending their summers off the shores of Canada. As winter comes, the sharks migrate south into warmer waters. According to the Ocean Research Organization, which tracks great white sharks all around the world, they noticed that some of their great white sharks that are being tracked have been acting strange, saying that they've been observed staying in areas that they're not normally seen in. One boat owner who lives in Canada said they made a strange discovery one morning and detailed that as they were docking into port, they could see a large great white shark at the surface of the water. The man said he approached the shark carefully, not wanting to cause it any injury, but said that as he approached the shark, it didn't even move. The boat owner said he inspected the animal for any damage, but noted that he couldn't see anything that would cause the shark to act like this. He said that he's never seen this type of behavior before. Warren Joyce, an aquatic fisheries technician with the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, said that this isn't the first time that a great white shark has been reported as acting strange, and that when he investigated one of these cases he called it unusual. He said that other shark species are usually seen washing up on beaches, but noted that it's very rare for this to happen to a great white. Warren Joyce said the following, For a white shark, this is very uncommon. It's my understanding that there will be an autopsy done. There wasn't any obvious cause that we could see. When we arrived, she was in pretty good condition with no bites, a few scratches and some bruising that could have been caused as she was washing up. Just one month after this report, the Marine Animal Response Society said on social media that they were called out to investigate a male great white shark that had washed up. The Marine Animal Response Society said the following on social media. This past weekend, we received a call to our hotline about a great white shark in New Brunswick. Although a common shark species in our waters, it's incredibly rare to receive reports of them washing ashore, making this an important opportunity to collect samples and learn more about this endangered species. With the assistance from Parks Canada, the three-and-a-half-metre male was collected off the beach and moved to a more suitable location for sampling by our Marine Animal Response Society team and a member of the Canadian Atlantic Shark Research Laboratory with Fisheries and Oceans Canada. Our organisations worked together to collect samples important for research and future analysis that will contribute to the long-term study of this species in Canadian waters. Unfortunately, a full autopsy was not able to be performed, and the reason this animal passed away is currently unknown. We are incredibly grateful to everyone who reported this incident, to Parks Canada for their assistance with moving the shark to an appropriate sampling location, and to Fisheries and Oceans Canada for their collaboration with sampling this animal. Please remember, as an endangered species, it's illegal to handle or remove any body parts from great white sharks. Marine Animal Response Society operates under a federally issued Species at Risk Act permit to respond to incidents involving at-risk marine species in Canada. Marine biologists recently came forward and said that from 2010 to 2016, some of the world's most famous great white sharks were known to congregate in several areas across the South African coast. This included the densely populated sites in False Bay, where an estimated population of 900 of the great whites were commonly sighted. However, since 2017, researchers and cage diving operators studying the sharks in this area noticed a sudden sharp decline in the number of sharks spotted in these areas. It's unclear how many great white sharks there are supposed to be around South Africa. Estimates range from around 500, right up to 900. When the sharks were most active in False Bay in 2010 to 2016, there were on average 205 sightings per year. However, in 2018, that number took a giant hit, plummeting right down to 50 sightings in that year, and in 2019, the number dropped to no sightings at all. The most recent great white shark sighting occurred in January 2020 in False Bay, over a year after the last sighting. For those few years between 2016 and 2020, Researchers were baffled as to why the sharks had suddenly disappeared. Alison Nock, a marine biologist for South African National Parks, has studied the white sharks in South Africa since 1998, 
and she says there is no singular theory for why the sharks have disappeared. However, she claims there are a handful of possible reasons. One being local fishing activity which targets species of sea creatures that juvenile shark pups tend to feed on. A decline in breeder sharks within the population and the predation of sharks by orcas present in the area. To begin with, media coverage of the South African Great Whites indicates that demersal shark longline fisheries are the central culprit for the decline. These fisheries target and capture the important smaller shark breeds that juvenile white sharks tend to feed on, which directly impacts the shark's mortality rate. For every smaller shark that's caught and taken out in these areas, there's one less for each white shark pup to feed on and gain nutrients from. Without these, the sharks just waste away. Furthermore, fisheries in and around these areas use shark nets and drum lines, baited hooks specifically targeting sharks to cull the white sharks to prevent them from swimming too close to the shore. From 2013 to 2017, on average, 17 great whites passed away on these drum lines every year. This supports the theory that demersal longline fishing in the area had a direct impact on the drop of great white sharks in the region. However, the problem with this theory is that scientists from South Africa's Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries have indicated that there is a lack of data to support it. These scientists say that they can only recommend catch control based on data, but there are no limits in place, and there are ample concerns about the notoriously weak monitoring of the South African coastlines. Marine biologists working out of the area have made some interesting findings. While sightings in the Western Cape have dropped, those in the Eastern Cape have jumped right up indicating that the sharks may have simply moved, despite the fact that there's still longline shark fishing there. Furthermore, the data being used to fuel this research is relatively new, being that recorded observations in False Bay only began in 1996. It's also important to note that the larger white sharks spend a lot of time far offshore, and the satellite tags used to track the sharks are extremely expensive, which means that there's so much movement and data that we never even get to see. To conclude, with all of this information and data that we can't see, we cannot possibly know if the fishing of smaller prey sharks is the primary cause of the decline. Another cause of the decline could be attributed to the decline in breeders within the South African white shark population. Sarah Andriotti studies the genetics of white sharks around the South African coast. In a two-year study from 2009 to 2011, Sarah estimated that there were only 300 breeders in a single white shark population, where the minimum is supposed to be 500 to prevent inbreeding. This low breeder count suggests that the male sharks within the population are not surviving, either through health difficulties or culling by the local fisheries. This then means that the mature female sharks wouldn't have been able to breed as highly, which could be an explanation for the dwindling shark count. However, there isn't much data to support this, so it's hard to know if this had a significant impact on the difference in sighting counts. The final theory, and the most plausible and supported of the bunch, is the recent spike in orca presence along the South African coast. Orcas are known for preying on seabirds, octopuses, sea turtles, rays, fish, and sharks. They're also known for being highly aggressive, especially if they're of the transient type, traveling in pods, acting like wolf packs in order to hunt marine mammals. Furthermore, orcas are one of the most widely distributed mammals, living in most oceans and seas surrounding coastal countries. However, they prefer to cruise the waters at higher latitudes. Since 2015, an increasing number of orcas have been spotted in and around the South African coast. To begin with, two orcas were first spotted in False Bay in 2015. Around the same time, the carcasses of a group of broadnose seven-gill sharks were found in False Bay. The teeth impressions from the wounds indicated that the culprit appeared to be an orca. Two years later, in 2017, five white shark carcasses washed up on the shores with their livers removed and with the teeth marks of orcas. At the same time, Alison Nock published a paper on the first documentation of a novel feeding technique, which explained how the orcas used force to break the shark's pectoral girdle, thus enabling them to bite out the liver and discard the rest of the carcass. As a result of this newfound information, Allison theorized that the disappearance of the sharks from False Bay was due to the growing orca presence in the area. Allison's theory is further supported by several other orca sightings that were documented at the time. For example, Salvador Jorgensen tagged 17 white sharks off the coast of the Farallon Islands, and they all disappeared. 
In his studies of the sharks, he found that the white shark can disappear for up to a year during the time that orcas pass through the area. This could be an explanation of the white shark migration to the Great White Shark Cafe between Hawaii and California. Meanwhile, this natural migration as a result of the orcas could also be an explanation for their disappearance from False Bay and other South African coasts. However, this might be a misinformed argument that's based on the data from two orcas. Due to the shark's evasive migration, there was an increase in white shark sightings further along the coast in Mossel Bay. At the end of 2019, Allison studied the orcas that passed through Mossel Bay at the time and found that they had orca pods come into an aggregation site with no change in white shark sightings. These orcas didn't include the two orcas that were seen in the area. Nonetheless, at the end of 2019, a video surfaced that shows an orca being interested in one particular white shark. Data shows that that same shark population dropped from 10 white sharks down to nothing overnight. Therefore, it's hard to say whether multiple orcas are the cause of these passings, or if it's just those two. Either way, we can say with some level of certainty that increased orca presence in the false bay and coastal areas directly impacted the number of white sharks that were around at the time. However, we can't be certain of which particular orcas are responsible. All of this data helps us better understand these incredible animals. As of right now, it's not just great white sharks that are washing up on shores and declining in numbers. Scientists and researchers who've been conducting their own studies have said this is happening in various locations across the world. And worryingly, when we look at some of the causes, human activity in the ocean seems to be a leading factor. One recent study revealed the Navy's use of sonar is hurting whales. It has been determined that active sonar is extremely harmful to whales and other aquatic animals, specifically a type of active sonar referred to as low-frequency active sonar. Low-frequency active sonar emits sound at a decibel nearly twice that of a rock concert and can maintain the decibel of a concert for 300 miles underwater. Not only is this incredibly loud, it's severely detrimental to animals who primarily use long-range sound underwater to communicate with each other, to find food, and to navigate. Low-frequency active sonar has led to animals losing contact with other members of their species, to them no longer foraging for food, and to them swimming deep or rising quickly because they are frightened by the sound. So, what do you make of these interesting findings? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.